and head into the warehouse, show you what we're doing today. All right, so this is everything that's ready to go as of right now. Hey everyone, I was on my way to do something and then I walked outside and it's like a perfect, amazing day. Other than my allergies are getting to me a little bit this morning. I, I don't know what it is. What I do a lot of days is just have pickups done. And I thought today, because it's so freaking nice, that what if I just run the packages today, or at least some of them, and that way I can do some Q&A questions and answers about uh, what I do for shipping. So we're gonna hop in, I'm gonna run to the warehouse. I'm actually gonna pick up everything, um, or at least whatever's ready to go. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna go drop them off and then we're gonna talk shipping. Yeah, let's get going. All right, I had to make a quick pit stop for that coffee. But we've got a tub, I don't know, we've probably got about 15 boxes, various sizes, and probably 12 to 15 of those little mailers as well. All right, so maybe the first thing to talk about first is the box options that I've got. So here in this pile, you'll notice uh, a few various kinds, but not, not a ton. Up above me, you'll see a few that I use most frequently. That is a, a 964, a 1088, and a 1086. And uh, that's gonna vary for everyone. It's gonna depend on the type of jar, uh, what different products you're selling. It's, that's gonna vary. I think the important part is, especially early on, is trying to be as simple as possible. I am horrible about that. I have probably 20 different box sizes here scattered out in different areas. So if we look here, this is a little overflow stock of some boxes here. Uh, in this corner, I've got a bunch of others that I just picked up. And uh, it's not a lot, but there are various sizes that I use for very specific situations. But for the most part, I stock the majority of about five sizes. And it just depends on what I'm shipping. Now, with that being said, again, the idea is to keep it as simple as possible. As you scale, you can become more efficient at your box sizes and shipping. But starting off, I don't think that there's a better option than to um, just pick a few sizes and make it work. Make everything work in that those ranges, those sizes. Now, I also sell these, these little padded bubble mailers as well. I use these for wicks personally, uh, but you can use them for wax melts as well. And they come in various sizes. But here's the thing. Where do you get all this stuff? And that is a big question for a lot of people because most think of things like Uline, Paper Mart. There's a slew of, of places you can get boxes online and ship to you and other packing materials as well. And that's all great. And yeah, you can get some really great deals. And actually the box price per box, like it, something like Uline or somewhere else is pretty darn good. The problem is if you're not nearby, by the time you spend money to have everything shipped, it's not cheap anymore. And so that can really increase your cost of goods from a shipping perspective, your cost of fulfillment. So I would highly suggest do as much research as you can to look in your own area to find what might be out there local. And it, uh, I'm fortunate enough to find a place called Altapack near me. It's like 10 minutes from me and they also do delivery, but I don't even need to because it's so close. So whenever I get, whenever I need a restock, I'll just, I'll just go get it or have them bring it to me. It's awesome. The box sizes are almost the same price as if I were to get from Uline, but I save 100% on shipping. So if you can find something like that nearby local, not only is it a huge cost advantage, but it's also an advantage on time and how much you have to stock. Because when you're gonna purchase from places like Uline, you need to uh, order in bulk because you don't wanna have to keep doing it over and over. With something nearby and local, you can just stock less because you can always get more whenever you need to. So it's fantastic. I get all my boxes there. I get um, my uh, bubble padded mailers. I get all my, let's see here. I get my reels of all my tape rolls, everything from there. Oh, another question I get all the time is how do I store or track all of these? Because I use so many boxes uh, up there, up, you know, over there, I kind of showed you around. It's a mess in here. If you've seen previous videos, I'm now finally starting to get to work in the warehouse. I had everything out of here so they could do some work, put in this new HVAC system for me. So anyways, I'm just now trying to get settled. But uh, the way I track it is the same way I track boxes, uh, wicks, uh, all my products and candles, oil, I mean, ev everything. Um, I track inside of Crafty Base. I have videos on it if you want to see an overview. It's just a software. It's a perfect size software for like small and me medium-sized businesses. 
Larger businesses can use it too, but it's a great way to get started for smaller and middle-sized businesses because it is very powerful. There are other alternatives out on the market, but none of them are near as powerful as what Crafty Base can do. So it grows with you really, really well and provides you a lot of other functionality and features. So it's not just for tracking materials to make things. You can track your shipping boxes. You can track components. You can track really anything. And I'm not trying to turn this whole video into you know about Crafty Base, but I, I literally get asked about it all the time. How do I get, know if I'm getting low on something without physically having to go check and count all the time? That's how. You can actually add it as a type of material into Crafty Base, just like you would wax or oils or wicks and jars and whatever. So uh, I keep turning the camera around, so probably looking at like the wrong spot here. Anyway, so that is what I use. I will link a couple of videos in the description below if you want to check it out. And then I have a link in the description below. It's an affiliate link. I've used it for, I don't know, probably seven years now, something around there. So if you guys do want to try it out, just check that link and you'll get a free trial of it as well. So with that being said, let's get back to the rest of the video. Enough about how I track this stuff. Let's talk about how I use it. I also go through a ton of bags of uh, packing peanuts. Now, I want to talk about packing peanuts and bubble wrap here in just a sec. Uh, from a sustainability perspective, because I know a lot of people try not to use certain materials. They're always trying to work towards a little bit more of a sustainable fulfillment approach. Um, first of all, those are eco-friendly um, bio peanuts is what they're called. So that is substantially better. I mean, there's they're, they're eco-friendly, but bubble wrap, things like that aren't. So what other options are there? Depending on where you are in your business, you've got options like crinkle cut, you've got the uh, uh, different paper type materials. You have honeycomb wrap. Uh, sorry, my fingers in the way. <laughs> um, there's there's other options out there that help with sustainability, environmentally friendly, um, recyclable. The the problem is for new business owners, new makers, is the cost to do that. It can be very very expensive, and it can be really hard for a small business to get off the ground trying to do that. So my personal perspective on when it came comes to sustainability. And we talked about this at the World Candle Congress. In fact, myself and Charlotte from Makesy uh, discussed this a little bit. And I think we're going to discuss this even more uh, once I'm out there in the LA area here pretty soon. But sustainability is not an all or nothing thing, right? So you can work towards sustainability if that is among your objectives. So, you know, if you're a business that's just worried about pumping out as much volume as you can and all you really care about is cost, well, then it's not, this doesn't even concern you. But I think sustainability is something that everyone should at least be aware of because it doesn't take a ton to make a difference. It is not an all or nothing approach. We can work towards it. To me, it's like a golf analogy. You're basically just trying to chip away and, and shorten the distance between your goal. And so every little improvement you can make is helpful. For example, switching to bio peanuts versus regular peanuts is an improvement. Using less material because I'm using more appropriate box sizes is an improvement. Decreasing transit time or consolidating shipments and orders helps because it's more fuel efficient for delivery and carriers. There's a lot of different ways you can go about sustainability. It doesn't mean that you have to replace everything and, and do everything all at once. You just don't have to. In other words, just do what you can and uh, you can improve things over time. That's That's my perspective on it and I think that will ease a lot of anxiety and stress for new business owners who are trying to achieve that goal, but being aware that they can't get there in, in one swoop. No one is 100% perfect on sustainability. Even if you're using 100% recyclable and sustainable materials yourself, you don't know the practices and processes necessarily of the rest of the supply chain. Even if the next level up is doing a fantastic job, you don't know what the level above them is doing. So all you can do is do the best you can and always be working to improve things. And so, uh, yeah, that's enough of my spiel on sustainability because I'm not great. You know, I'm not perfect on it. I, I use bubble wrap uh, quite a bit. I, you know, I use a lot of variety of materials, but I'm doing what I can, improving where I can. All right, so I forgot my uh, little stand to hold my camera, so hopefully this will work. But I just wanted to show you a quick way of how I would tape up my boxes for delivery uh, through like U UPS or United States Postal Service. So. Let me just grab a box here. The first thing I do is I've got uh, my stamper that I stamp my boxes with. Just to put my logo on there, it is nothing fancy at all, but it is a super cheap, effective way to uh, add a little bit of branding. Now for me, this is a 10 by eight by six box, which is irrelevant for this, but let me show you a few tips. And in most, this is very basic. Most of you are already doing this, but your carriers will appreciate this and uh, make it easier for you to fight any kind of insurance battles if they were to damage a product. Uh, because they're gonna be picky and ask certain questions like how you taped your box. So what I do is, most, what most people do is put a strip across the center 
and then something used on the edges. And that's totally fine, especially for light box, for uh, light packages. What I do is go across basically two thirds of the center. Like that. And then I do it again on the other side, which gives me a nice wide band that has a little bit of extra coverage right in the center. Now you can buy wider tape. I think I've got, uh, what is this, inch and a half, two inch tape, and you can get like three inch. But to me, this still works really, really well. And it's cheaper tape. Also, try to get high quality tape in terms of weather resistance. You don't want something that becomes uh, less sticky as it gets cold, for example. All right, and then I pull a strip, see if you can see it in camera, basically just a tiny bit wider than the box, like that, okay? Then I do this like I'm wrapping a gift present, so I just line it across the top like this. All right, and then I fold on the edge, tuck and flap down, sort of like a present. So that gets the corners, it gets uh, the whole side, same thing on the other side. That. So there you go, that's one side. Then what I would do is, depending on what you're, of course, shipping, is I'll add the layer of uh, packing peanuts or whatever materials you're using, uh, put in your protected products, so bubble wrapped materials, or again, however you're boxing everything. Uh, and then another layer of peanuts on top. I'll take a packing slip. If you are using your packing slips, I'll fold them up. Um, you can put in things like, you know, thank you cards or care cards, whatever you want right on top. And then of course, seal it the exact same way I did the other side. Then of course, it's super handy to have your scale with you as well. And I've got mine connected to, you know, my whole checkout fulfillment system here. And uh, I will weigh the box when I'm done. And then I will use the system to print out the appropriate label. I use a Rolo printer here, which is fantastic. Never had a single issue with it. I think I have it linked in the description below. If you are interested in checking them out, it basically makes the, the cost of shipping labels like three cents a piece. It's hard to beat. Um, and then this is just a regular printer for like packing slips. Now, at some point, I do plan on doing a much more in-depth detail about the entire order to shipment process. I will show you that. I just don't have really time to do that. I'm kind of winging this today, in fact. Um, but I highlight and summarize a few important things. The first thing you got to think about is what platform you're using. All right, so I use Shopify for my website. If you're not using Shopify yet or you're using something else or uh, you're not even at that stage yet, you should probably be using Pirate Ship. It's a free service that gets you bulk discount pricing for shipping packages, similar to like what you'd get on Shopify. Now, as you're on something like Shopify and you scale up and you increase your your platform that you're on on there, your, your level, your package, whatever they call it, um, you'll get better stuff. But for now, Pirate Ship is absolutely the way to go until you have a system that gives you the same or better rates like Shopify. So with Pirate Ship, if you haven't used it, you just, it's like a typical shipping service. You put in your box size, the weight, destination, and it will give you some discounted pricing. As far as shipping items and how expensive it can get, because we're shipping heavy items like candles or whatever you might be sending. And that always worries a lot of people. Well, the first thing I would say is start with a flat rate based shipping cost for your customers. Um, if that really concerns you. So like every order is like $5, $6 flat rate shipping, $7, whatever you want it to be. And then anything over, let's say $60 is free shipping. That will help offset some of your own costs. But the thing is, every order you send, small boxes, padded mailers, whatever, is gonna have a minimum kind of base cost to ship an item, right? But as you add more items and that box gets bigger and heavier, it doesn't just exponentially increase like on a linear scale. It's not like every item is double the cost, right? So it's much less costly, more cost effective, I should say, to ship more items per order. So encourage your customers to purchase more items. You wanna increase your average order value and the number of items they're buying. So do that with bundles or whatever. Because here's the thing, this entire box here, let's see if I can get in here. All right, this is like a 10 by eight by eight. And don't worry, this is Steve from Making Good Sense. I'm sending him something. He's not gonna care that his label showing. So don't worry. Um, this is a heavy item, it's almost 11 pounds. This entire thing is only cost $12 for me to ship, $12.50, I think. Um, and so it's not, it's not that bad. Now, granted, I'm getting some discounts through Shopify, through my platform that I use, but everyone has access to those. So if you don't yet, use Pirate Ship. And as you scale, you get better discounts. So it's not as big of a deal as, as I don't want it to scare you. I don't want shipping to worry anyone. We'll go into a lot more videos, uh, a lot more detail in other videos in the future. 
But I just wanted to explain, show you, you know, that I, I know that shipping one candle seems ridiculous and it does sometimes. That's why you encourage customers to buy more because I can send 11 pound box for less than $13. That's not too shabby, not too shabby. By the way, I apologize if it's loud out. I've got the garage open. Uh, everything's open up in the warehouse. Some sort of just very large truck going by. So sorry about that. Once you have your platform that you're using to ship out your products, so your orders, the next question becomes is what carrier, what service to use to ship them? Post office, UPS, FedEx, DHL, whatever. Well, again, it's gonna depend for everyone. Just depends on where you're shipping and how much you're shipping and the volume and the weight and all of that. But for the most part, you'll notice that everything behind me, all of this is going to the same place, which is USPS, because 95% of my orders tend to go out through United States Postal Service, but that won't be the case for everyone. A good general sort of rule of thumb is if it's the majority is gonna be cheapest to go post office for most people, anything that's super heavy or going really far, it can be cheaper to go UPS. It just depends. I don't do much FedEx or anything else. So for me, that's, that's the two I, pretty much exclusively use unless I'm shipping something international to Canada or something. And even most of those tend to still be UPS or post office. But it's not just about the service you're using, it's about how you package the orders. Now for me, if I'm selling wicks or wax melts or anything that's super light, first class is the best. You know, you can use boxes for first class, you can use padded mailers for first class, it's, uh, as long as it's under a pound, and there might be some other rules as well, but I've never ran into those, um, then that's gonna always be your best bet. And then anything that's over that is where you have to start paying a little bit more attention to box size and weight, uh, box size and weight, uh, because priority shipping through USPS, for example, UPS ground or USPS cubic pricing. Now, depending on what service you're using, like Shopify, you might not have access to highly discounted cubic pricing rates, but if you do, you can save a ton of money, especially on things that are kind of mid-size and heavier. So I use a lot of cubic pricing for or cubic rates for candle orders that are between like two and five pounds and not using anything larger than like a 10 by eight by eight box or something like that. So it just depends. And the point is, is don't let that overwhelm you. I know that sounds like that's a lot of information and every large truck just wants to go by today. So I know that sounds overwhelming. Like that's a lot of information to try to remember, but these systems will help you do that. Do not worry about it. Do not overthink it. This is something that gets easier with time. The longer you do it, do not let it freak you out or concern you. And there's plenty of people that can help you out, including myself here on the channel and Facebook groups or whatever. So just, just start off very simple, pick a few boxes, pick a carrier, pick your platform, and it will help you out. It will tell you what to use generally to get you the best time to delivery or best costs. So we're headed to the post office, take uh, take all these bins, drop off the orders. And uh, I thought this would be a good time to discuss whether you should do pickups or drop offs. Meaning uh, you can schedule pickups uh, so they come to your place and grab everything instead of you having to take it. Um, I do both and it just kind of depends for me. I would say if you're in a position where uh, you know, you're shipping out of your house or you got a shop and uh, it's pretty consistent and you've got someone always there, then pickup is hard to beat. I mean, that's awesome if they can come pick it up for you. And with the post office, it's free usually. And uh, with the with UPS, it just it just depends. It's very, so there's usually a weekly charge or something for, uh, for UPS. And I don't do enough through UPS for me that that's worth it. So um, I'll just take stuff to UPS while I'm out if I have to. Uh, but the post office is, uh, you know, daily free pickups or whatever, which is, which is really nice. Um, so as far as why I'm taking today, first of all, I like to just do it sometimes. If I'm already going out and I've got stuff ready, I'll just grab it. I, I, I don't mind stopping and I'll check my PO box or something while I'm there. So that's why I'm doing it. And of course, today I'm doing it just because I figured it was a good time to do a Q&A. And, um, you know, one thing that I would say that if you are running out daily, once, you know, every day, a few, three times a week, every, you know, whatever, once a week, doesn't really matter make sure you're tracking your mileage. So if you don't have an app to track mileage, just keep a, uh, keep a document, a spreadsheet, and just every day put in the total mileage between, uh, you know, to run to the post office. And then the mileage rate, which at the time of this video is 60 half, uh, 65 and a half cents, 
And so it doesn't sound like much, but if you do this every day or a few times a week, you're talking about up to a thousand, couple thousand dollars worth of deductions for your business every year. So I'm in April and just off of, or it's May now, just through May and running to the post office back and forth, which is only a couple miles away, uh, it's already over you know $1,500 worth of deductions just from running to the post office, which I'm gonna do anyways. So you know, might as well track your mileage, it doesn't hurt. Okay, so we are getting to the post office and normally, if I don't have a lot, I'll just run it into the post office and, and open up that drum and just toss the boxes in. But we are actually going to go around to the dock because I don't really want to carry three tubs and random boxes inside. So we're going to ring their little bell here. Drop this stuff off. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up uh, the point of this video, I guess. I was just headed out to drop off some orders and thought I would take you along with me and maybe talk uh, a little bit about shipping and some tips and just, I guess, my overall thoughts about it. And uh, I, uh, I had to reload on some of these guys here because I just dropped off a few of them, which I do occasionally. And uh, yeah, so if you have any other questions or ideas, suggestions for some videos about shipping, fulfilling orders or anything like that, just put it in the comment section below and I'll try to get to that. Like I said, I do have some more detailed ones planned on actually packing and fulfilling orders from start to finish, but I thought, why not take you with me on this one and just have a general casual conversation. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Check out one of the videos that pops up here on the screen. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and see y'all next time.